birds have trafficked the West Nile virus across practically every U.S. state. And with mosquitoes as their transmitters, everyone is vulnerable to the virus that has the potential to violently kill. And mosquitoes don't only transmit West Nile, they also carry something much deadlier. Number seven, Plasmodium falciparum, the parasite that causes malaria. It's a disease that brings on an acute fever and flu-like sickness. This ancient illness still kills between one to three million people each year, primarily in poor tropical regions. In sub-Saharan Africa, a child dies from malaria every 30 seconds. Like bacteria and viruses, parasites are also microorganisms with a specific function. They lie in or on living tissue of a species, like humans, and exploit them to stay alive by feeding on cells. Plasmodium falciparum is a primitive parasite that invades the host via the bite of a mosquito. From there, an infectious form can travel to the liver of a human host, replicate, and then burst forth into the bloodstream, after which it infects red blood cells. In this video of red blood cells infected with Plasmodium falciparum, you can actually see these parasites literally blowing up cells as they erupt out and then infect neighboring cells. A human's best line of defense against these foreign invaders is our immune system, including an army of white blood cells, our first responders to prevent microbial infections. Found in the blood and tissues, these cells will often engulf foreign bodies. But malarial parasites are sneaky. They hide within the liver and red blood cells where they remain almost invisible to the immune system as they multiply and eventually kill the cells. In severe cases, the microbe massacres so many red blood cells that it causes severe anemia, multiple organ failure, coma, and death. The parasite Plasmodium falciparum remains a potential threat for anyone living in or visiting tropical areas. But there's an even scarier germ that can attack anyone, anywhere in the world. It's a global killer, one of the biggest in modern times. You may be wondering why the next virus is considered one of the scariest germs. Number six, the influenza virus, which causes the flu. The virus may seem harmless. Most of us have gotten it several times in our lives and lived to see another day. But don't be fooled. The flu is not like the common cold. The flu can kill, and some strains are profoundly deadly. The influenza virus is scary because it's easily transmissible through direct or indirect contact with an infected person. Every year, influenza attacks between three and five million individuals, resulting in up to 500,000 deaths worldwide. There are 30,000 deaths every year in the United States alone from garden variety human influenza. We often overlook that fact. <laughs> influenza is highly contagious. The virus is commonly transmitted through inhaling droplets from an infected person coughing or sneezing on you. Once inside the body, the virus begins replicating. Our immune system comes to the rescue, making cytotoxic T cells. These are antibodies or proteins that can inactivate the virus. Chemicals also stimulate nerve fibers that trigger sneezing and coughing to rid the body of the viral infection. Once the virus is cleared from the body, our immune system makes memory cells that can recognize that particular virus and defend the body from future infections. But some viruses can outwit these memory cells by constantly changing their surface structure. There are viruses, what you get, and your immune system clears, and then it's gone. Yet the next version can come in and cause the disease all over again. 
In any given year, there are a variety of strains of influenza. Some can die out, while others create worldwide epidemics called pandemics. The worst in recorded human history was the Spanish flu of 1918. It wiped out almost 50 million people. Probably the biggest infectious disease threat we humans face as a species is from disease that's carried by animals. And it will almost certainly be a disease carried by birds. And it'll probably be influenza. Like West Nile, the influenza virus has a reservoir of hundreds of millions to billions of birds around the world. And when birds migrate over long distances, they can swap strains of influenza through a process called recombination, whereby two viruses within an animal exchange genes. As a result, a new or mutated virus emerges and can be passed to other animals. That's the opportunity for two different strains of influenza to co-infect the same animal at the same time, and out pops then a genetic reassortment of the virus which we may not have any immunity to. Our best defense against influenza viruses is annual vaccines, which are typically made of compounds from actual viruses, which have been made inactive through a chemical process. When vaccinated, the immune system recognizes the vaccine agents as foreign invaders. Antibodies, or cytotoxic T cells, are made to destroy the invaders, and memory cells remember them. When the actual virus comes along, the memory cells recognize its protein code from the vaccine and neutralize it before it can cause disease. But since influenza viruses are constantly mutating, we need new vaccines every year. So it's a constant battle between them and us. And oftentimes, the germs win. The dreaded daily walk to your mailbox. You're expecting a pile of bills, but someone has sent you something even worse. You open what appears to be an empty envelope. Out wafts a bacterium, which has been manufactured into an odorless powder. You accidentally inhale it. You could potentially die within a week from this messenger of doom. Number five, Bacillus anthracis, which causes the acute disease, anthrax. In 2001, the bacterium was sent through the U.S. mail as a biological warfare agent. 22 individuals contracted the pathogen, and five of them died. Had I waited another day, I would have died because I had enough anthrax um, in my system that I should have died. Although these incidents are rare, what makes anthrax really scary is that if left untreated, the fatality rate is over 90% within 48 hours of inhaling the bacterium. As a result, the CDC has classified anthrax a Category A agent, meaning it poses the greatest potential to inflict global human disaster. When the United States had a biological weapons program, the favorite organism, if one wished to achieve lethality, was probably